Hi everyone, Nick here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this uh, sort of stylized combination chart. It's really kind of a combination of a vertical lollipop chart, and then it has this area chart, this gray shaded area chart sort of in the background. And we also have a custom X axis with different color labels along that bottom horizontal axis there. So this would be a great chart type to use if uh, you were looking at maybe data from three different points in time. Maybe it's the same survey question uh, after three different time, uh, points in time, maybe there are a couple different intervention points that you want to sort of survey or that you want to um, document in some way. And this could be kind of a nice visual way to do that. We're doing that with color. So we're looking at different colors for each uh, of the points in time. And then uh, we're giving this sort of extra effect by just having that extra little uh, shaded area, which is really great for things like slope charts, which, which only have two points in time. You can really get a good sense of an increase or a decrease. In this case, we're kind of adding a point and you could add other points uh, to this if you want to but you can really kind of see the slope between uh, one point in time to the next and then from that point in time to the other and so this is a really good way uh, that we could see if everything is increasing over time or if everything is sort of staying the same sustaining or if uh, some things are decreasing sort of in uh, that third point in time as well so I'm gonna take you through how we have to set this up in Excel we're gonna paste it over to PowerPoint or to Word and then I'm gonna show you how to work with it over there if you were doing this and sort of a small multiples uh, kind of treatment and you had several of these that you wanted to update. It's just gonna take us a little bit of time to set this up. And I'm gonna set this up uh, with you so that it's kind of like a template so that all you'll have to do is type in your values for before, the three values for before, after, and then the longitudinal value. You won't have to mess with any of the other things in uh, the chart source area. You can just go ahead and update these values and the chart will update for you as well. So we're just gonna go down here and I'm gonna start making this from scratch. Um, so the first thing we have to do is we're going to set up the area chart. So we're just going to, we have our three points in time. This is how it's going to be set up before, after, long. Three uh, different columns of data and just one row of data. We're going to insert an area chart. So up here from the chart menu down here to 2D area. Very nice. There's a couple things that I'm going to do to clean this chart up. We're not going to have a title here because we're going to add titles via text boxes in Word or PowerPoint. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to um, set this axis to uh, 0 and 100%. It already is there. But if we were to use this as a template and we had data that was different, um, Excel might try to be smart and sort of update the minimum or maximum value of the chart based on the data that we see. And I never want this to change. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and format the axis and we're going to go over here to minimum. I'm just going to retype in zero and push enter. You see that reset button um, pops up right here and that just says like now this minimum axis value has been hard coded as zero. And then I'm going to do the same thing with one. So just type in one and push enter and now you have um, that axis label there. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to, you could either turn this white or you could just delete it altogether. I'm going to go ahead and actually turn it white. We're gonna turn the color there white, and then I'm just gonna decrease the font size all the way to like something like two or one, just so it's very small there. And we're gonna go ahead and just make sure that um, it's stretching there for the full, uh, uh, the full area of the chart. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the grid lines, so just click those. And then you'll notice that all these charts always come with a gray border in them. Delete those borders. Um, that's kind of an example of uh, decluttering your chart. That's kind of just an example of uh, visual competition. Uh, once you put it into your report, it's much better to have the white space in the background bleed into the chart. And so we just want to get rid of that border. You click the whole chart and then go over here to border and just say no line. And now there's no border. Let's go ahead and update the color of the area to that uh, really light shade of gray. I'm going to update the fill color here. I had already saved that uh, shade of gray, but you could just kind of play with any of this, uh, the gray shades right there. And then we actually don't need our x-axis down here. I'm going to go ahead and delete that because we're going to create a custom axis. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that axis now. We just have uh, this area chart. Now what we need to do is we need to add those lollipops. And we do that by adding a column chart into the foreground of our chart. So I'm gonna set this up here first. I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna call this before series. I'm just gonna call this before, after, and, and long as well. You could, it doesn't matter what these are, are labeled. You can uh, call them anything, but they have to be set up in this way. So every single, each on its own individual row. And then this value right here for the before has to be in this series. So I'm just gonna type in equal sign and then point to that cell. 
and then push enter. So whatever is in this cell, whatever is in this top cell uh, before will show up in this cell. So in this way, you don't have to update multiple values when you're updating this template. All you have to do is update values in this top row and everything else will self-populate. So in the after column, we're not going to, or in the before column, this is all we're going to do in the before, in the row, the before row. Then in the after row right here in the middle, we're going to do that same thing, equal that 95. And then for the longitudinal uh, column, we're going to go all the way over here to the right and do the same thing. So there we go. So we have this kind of matrix of uh, three, uh, well, I guess three by four kind of right here, but that's how you have to set this up. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to highlight that series. I'm just going to push control C to copy. And now we're going to paste this into the chart right here. Something weird is going to happen, but we're going to fix it. So uh, highlight the chart, push control V to paste. And now you see all the values in that area chart just kind of pop up. Now we're going to go ahead and change this to a combination chart type. So we're going to click, uh, keep this, um, actually, I'm going to push escape so that the little uh, highlighted range uh, stops highlighting for me kind of visually distracting to me at least. And what we're going to do is highlight the chart, go up to the chart design tab, click on change chart type. Right now it's all, only set to area chart. We're going to go down here to combo chart. Now you can see this first uh, area, things kind of update uh, strangely. So we have to go ahead and update things on our own. So the area chart uh, series, we're going to call it, we're going to change from that clustered column to an area chart down here. And then before, after, and longitudinal, we're going to make clustered column chart. So this one is already clustered column for before. After needs to change to clustered column there. And then long needs to change to clustered column. We're going to say OK. And now we're starting to get that behind the scenes look here. Now you can see that the gray shading doesn't go all the way over to the blue bar and all the way over to the green bar. So the way that we fix that is by clicking one of the bars, going over to the Format Data Series menu here, click on the bar chart icon, and we're going to change uh, the plot series um, uh, series overlap. So right now it's set to zero, but we're going to change it to 100%. And when I do that, you'll see all the bars kind of squish into that gray area. Now all of these bars need to be turned into lollipops. So the way that we do that individually, we highlight one of the series, we go to the paint bucket, we say no fill, and then we're going to add error bar. So you can do this a few different ways. This way, I'm going to click on the little plus sign skittle that pops up here. The error bar option right here, I'm going to click on that over area and click uh, the over arrow and click on percentage. And so now on just this series, you get this little error bar right here. I'm going to click that so that the format error bar menu on the side pops up. I'm going to uh, get rid of that skittle there. Now on the menu, we are going to format this uh, how we want it. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the bar chart um, icon. I'm going to select minus. I only want it to be the minus part of the error bar. I'm going to say no cap. I don't want there to be a cap on the error bar. And then under percentage, it defaults to 5%, but we're going to keep it at. We're going to put it to 100%. And that brings the error bar all the way down to the, to the x axis. Now I'm going to go back to the paint bucket now and update some of the colors. So we're going to update that color to the bar, that, the color that we want it. And then the width is set to 0.75 points. We're going to go all the way up to two points here just to make it a little bit bigger. And then we're going to add the lollipop by adjusting the beginning begin arrow type. Right here, click on that menu, you can see it's just a line, but we can also change it to this circle. And so that's going to uh, make it a lollipop like that. Perfect. Now I'm making this chart a little bit bigger just so that we can see it, but we can squish it in if we want to like this. And that could be a pretty nice option there. Now we're going to do the same things for each of the other series. The reason we have to do these, um, create this individual series treatment for the columns is because the error bars need to be different colors because we're going to color code these per uh, for each group. And if we just did this as one series with all of the values across one single row, then all of the error bars would have to be the same color. You can't isolate the error bars in the same way that you can isolate a single column on a chart like this. So we're going to go ahead and do this. The other way you can get error bars is going up to the chart design tab, click on add chart element and go to error bars right here and then click on percentage. And then we get that error bar there. Format error bars minus no cap 100%. And we're going to make this a blue color, update it to two points and then add that lollipop with the begin arrow type and the circle. Perfect. We're going to do the same thing for these, uh, the longitudinal one, no fill. We're going to go ahead and add chart element, error bar, percentage. Go ahead and set it to minus, no cap, 100%. And we're going to change this to orange, two points. And then we're going to add that lollipop with the begin error, part, error bar. Perfect. Now we have the makings of a really nice, um, 
lollipop chart plus area chart kind of combination. Now I'm gonna take the plot area and just drag it down just a little bit because I wanna put some uh, data labels on these lollipops. And all you have to do is just right click each of the bars and then select add data label. So this is still the bar, this is still the column chart. So I'm gonna go ahead and isolate the one column by double clicking. We're gonna go ahead and say right click and then say add data label. And it's automatically gonna be on the outside there. So I'm gonna go ahead and update this to the color, the same color of the error bar. Same thing for this one. I'm gonna right click, add data label. It's a 95% there. Something weird just happened and I'll show you in just a second. I'm gonna update the color here. But you can see that when I did that, it also gave these zero labels for the other um, columns. We don't want those. So we can just double click that to isolate it and then delete it, double click to isolate it and then delete it. And that just happens if you don't properly isolate the single column that you want that uh, data label on. So I'm going to make sure to double click this one, right click, and then say add data label. And that gives me the data label there. Perfect. So now I have this nice data label. Now the one thing that we need still is our custom x-axis. So I'm just going to go ahead to our data series and just say um, x-axis labels doesn't matter what you put there, 0%, 0%, and 0%. Make sure that each of these is 0%. They're all going to be in the same row. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to the same thing. I'm going to control C to copy these data, go over to the chart and paste them, control V. Nothing happens because it's still treating this like a column chart and it's all zero values. So you're not going to see any columns. So we have to go up to the change, uh, the chart design tab and then change chart type. And then when you scroll down here, you can see the X axis label has been added to the chart, but it's still a clustered column. We want this to be a line with markers. So change that to line with markers, click OK. And now you can see that we have this line series right here with markers. We're just going to go ahead and delete the line. So click on the series over in the format data series menu, say no line. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click uh, the labels, the dots, and we're going to add data labels. I'm going to click on the data labels and put them underneath. So once those are highlighted, go to the format data label menu, and then the position, uh, we're going to select the label position as below, and that puts it right below there. And I'm going to go ahead and just um, click in the plot area, just maybe drag it up just a little bit so that there's some room. And then with um, the data labels selected now, instead of the 0%, instead of the values, we're going to uh, have these labels point to a value from a cell. So that they're gonna point to the headers up here, what we want to call uh, our, our access labels there. So I'm gonna go over from the format data label menu, label options, you see value is selected, we're gonna unselect value, and then we're gonna select value from cells. And then the uh, range pops up, it's asking you where you wanna pull those data labels. We'll just go ahead and drag it right there, click OK. And now we have our three data labels down there, and I'm gonna update these with the color. And again, you have to double click one label to isolate it. So we're gonna call that before. I'm gonna also make this bold. And then I'm gonna say after, we'll make that blue and bold. This will be orange and bold. And then you can see we have one more thing here. We still have our little dot markers there. I kept those there just so that it's easier to um, see them and add the labels there, but we're gonna get rid of them. Don't delete them. We're gonna right click these. We're gonna say format data labels. The format data label menu will pop up. And then, um, or, the, or actually we don't want the data labels. We wanna format the data markers. So we're gonna make sure that the markers are selected, not the labels. Go over here to the format data series menu and then that paint bucket icon again. Under marker type, uh, marker options, we're gonna say none. Right now it's set to automatic, but we're gonna say none and that gets rid of the markers, but the, the, the values in the series are still there sort of behind the scenes. Now I wanna make sure to update the dimensions of this chart. I think we're gonna end up putting multiple of these charts side by side in a PowerPoint slide or in a Word uh, document. So I wanna make sure that each of these is about two inches, maybe a little wider than two inches um, by two inches high. So we're gonna go ahead and highlight the chart up to the, uh, the format tab pops up there and under size, right now it's set to three for the height. I'm gonna set that to two. And then it's 2.89. We're probably gonna, let's just go ahead and um, update this to two and see what that looks like. Now I'm gonna go ahead and select the plot area. I'm gonna adjust it just a little bit because if we had another uh, bar that went up to 100%, we wanna leave a little bit of room for, um, for that label. But then you can also see here that it's kind of smart and it's sort of wrapping some of the text inside of those labels. So what we wanna do is we wanna unwrap that text. So click that, uh, make sure that the labels are selected. We're gonna go in the format data label menu here. We have this um, size and position, uh, size and property 
properties icon. We're going to click it and then under size, and then under alignment, you have to just go ahead and uncheck this box that says wrap text and shape. So we're going to unselect that. And when you do that, that updates the chart to nice um, single, single lined objects there. Now it looks like, I think I know that I want, I uh, already want this font to be 11. And then I'm going to make the label uh, font here 11 as well. The data label 11. So this is how to make that chart. Now, if you ever wanted to update um, this this chart as sort of a template, then what we need to, then you don't need to worry about anything in these cells right here. I'm going to go ahead and just sort of gray them out. You just have to type your values in here in these three. So if we were to update this, we could just update the chart, and that will update, and that will update just like this. And so we can then copy this chart and paste it into our page. I'm going to go ahead and select undo so that we have our same labels, our same uh, chart there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and right click this chart and copy it. We're going to go over to our PowerPoint slide over here, which would be a page. You can also do this in Word. I'm going to right click and then you get paste options. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, the second option, which is keep source formatting. So I want to keep the source formatting for my workbook and embed the workbook. Now this will work if your um, Excel file is updated with all the theme colors and everything else. Um, and then the same thing if your um, your report is updated with all the theme colors too. That will work to, uh, to do that. You might just have to adjust it. So once you put it in here, you're just going to either do one of these two options here. You're going to embed the file so that it, what it essentially does is it embeds the workbook behind the scenes. And then you can go in and edit that data wherever, wherever this PowerPoint file lives or this Word file lives um, for um, the location that you place it on your computer there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to position it where I want it to be. This is might be for my first question. Now, I may just add a text box for the title, for whatever title I do here. So this is just going to be a, a title there. And after I put all of my charts, um, after I configure all of my charts in sort of this small multiple treatment, then I'm going to go ahead with my text box titles and probably reduce the size. They'll probably go down to 11 points as well. Uh, they'll probably each of these titles is going to be two or maybe three lines. So we're just going to do that. And then we're going to go through and manually sort of align each of those text boxes together, make sure everything is in alignment. But we're going to take this one chart. We're going to go ahead and copy it, Control C. I'm going to go ahead and say, just say this paste option. You only get to two, so we're just going to embed it again here. And now with uh, my second piece of data, all I have to do now is edit this chart. So right click the chart, say edit data, and the source um, Excel file will pop up. And then if I want new values here, all I have to do is type those three new values here into that source data, close, and now I have this updated chart. So I would probably then update um, the chart title, control D to duplicate, and then I would just update these titles as they go. So that's the process that I would use for making this into a small multiple treatment. You don't have to make each an individual um, chart in that Excel file. You can go ahead and make one perfect the first time, copy it, embed it into your Word or PowerPoint file, and then copy it as many times as you need and edit each of those individually. Then once you save uh, this document as a PDF, everything will be fine. Sometimes when you have a lot of charts and you embed all the workbooks, then the files can become pretty big in terms of size. Um, but if you know for a one-time report, it really shouldn't make that much of a difference, uh, particularly if you're exporting it to PDF. So. I hope that uh, this tutorial was helpful. I really like this uh, chart type. I just think it's kind of cool. It's not a native chart type in PowerPoint. You have to work with some of the features, some of the little hacks behind the scenes to kind of get this. But I think it's a really nice visual effect. Uh, that's not too distracting, but it really does sort of draw your eye to this idea of change between uh, the first point and the second point in time, and then change between the uh, second and the third point in time. So I hope you all like this video. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't already. Uh, and I will see you all next time.